A reflection for Easter Day. Praise be Jesus Christ now and forever. Alleluia. From the Gospel according to Mark. At that time, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, brought sweet spices. That coming, they might anoint Jesus. And very early in the morning, the first day of the week, they came to the sepulchre, the sun being now risen. And they said one to another, Who shall roll us back the stone from the door of the sepulchre? And looking, they saw the stone roll back, for it was very great. And entering into the sepulchre, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, clothed with a white robe, and they were astonished. Who said to them, Be not affrighted. Ye seek Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. Behold the place where they laid him, but go tell his disciples and Peter that he goeth before you into Galilee. There you shall see him as he told you. We experience the power of God in this great weekend. During the Tridom, we venerated the cross on which our Saviour died. And then last night, we considered the whole of the work of creation in that first reading and so on. God created the world from nothing. Oh, we have our theories about what happened next, but that is the baseline. And that is a huge work of power. We couldn't begin to graphically describe it. To say there was a big bang is inadequate, isn't it? No, God created the world powerfully. And we, of course, as the crown of his creation, have to acknowledge that that too was a work of the power of the craftsman, we might say. As I said earlier, we experience the power of God as we venerate the cross on which our Saviour died, because having given us free will, and we having rejected it, rejected him, then we had to find out the power of God to save us. The passion the agony, the very nails which were used to bring about our salvation. That is a matter, well, at least of the same power, if not greater, than that by which the world was made. It's the death of the Son of God which opened the way back to God. Yes, a work of great power. St. Hilary says, The earthquake signifies the power of the resurrection. For the sting of death now crushed, and the dark places made light by the rising up of the Lord of hosts, hell is shaken by alarm. We need to enter into the reality of what happened when God came down to earth to die for us. And that affects us too. It affects us in a way that St. Bede describes. The earthquake, he says, signifies that earthly hearts must first be shaken to repentance through faith in his passion and resurrection, stirred up by a most salutary fear. Yes. His passion and resurrection are calls to repentance, and that will be through faith. It's not all about power, though, is it? Because, in fact, we might equally say that it is love that penetrated hell. Even in the extreme darkness, Benedict the Sixteenth says, even in the extreme darkness of the most absolute human loneliness, 
we may hear a voice that calls us and find a hand that takes ours and leads us out. There we have a picture of hell as ultimate loneliness through our own selfishness, through our own rejection of others, desire to do our own way. Yes, that is a form of hell. Benedict goes on, human beings live because they are loved and can love. And if love ever penetrated the realms of death, then life also reached there. Life itself, Christ. Yes, love is there. But our Lord didn't remain there. No, he burst his three-day prison to rise above, to return to the Father. And this brings us to another point. What is the goal? The goal is union. We are to be united. We might even say, thinking about the whole span of history, reunited with God. In fact, thanks to the Felix Culpa, the happy fault of the fall, we can hope for a relationship with the triune God which goes beyond that experience by Adam and Eve in their evening walks with God in the Garden of Eden. Yes, we are going to be conformed to the likeness of his Son. We are going to enter into the Trinity itself thanks to this day. For that to become a reality, we must persevere in holiness. We must persevere in love. After all, the Son has gone through his passion and sacrificial death for us. And we must be prepared to follow him. Whatever it takes, final perseverance. Through faith, not a theoretical faith, sought, promoted by Luther, but a faith in action, yes, faith with works. And then we will see his glory. Ah, yes, the glory. From the Paschal sequence, Tell us, Mary, say what thou didst see upon the way, that whom the living did enclose. I saw Christ's glory as he rose. We want, we long to see that glory. Surrexit Christus hodie. He is risen today. Alleluia. Praise be Jesus Christ, now and forever.